I grew up in a beautiful part of Australia, so lovely forested hills, uh, mountain streams and fertile agricultural land. But it made me very angry as a child that a lot of the bushland was being bulldozed and they were replacing it with a monoculture tree species and the land, the steep hills were left fallow for long periods of time, sometimes years. And so even though at that stage I hadn't studied ecology, but it was a nonsense. There was erosion, there was loss of uh, habitat and diversity, there was siltation in the river. At the same time in that valley they were growing tobacco. And here he was this weed that makes people sick and they were spraying it with very toxic chemicals that drifted into the rivers that we swam in and drank from and fish were being killed. I thought, what's wrong with the adult world? They're mad. Don't they care about these things? Isn't it important? And then at the same time, I, I like to read, I like to watch the news, and children just like me, who through no fault of their own, grew up in another place and were hungry. And that was just so unjust. And, and again, I, I, I come from a faith background, I, I said a simple prayer because I was powerless to change the way things were, but I said, please use me somehow, somewhere. And, and, and I share that because it's important in, in the story when we got to Niger, because it was hard. And there were many, um, many setbacks, many difficulties, but in trying to be true to that prayer, uh, I think it gave me courage to keep going, no, you, you are in the right place, there is a solution, don't give up. But uh, from childhood, I, I studied agriculture with a view, well, I, I loved gardening, I loved growing things, but I thought, you, you need to be useful. You can't just go over there and hand things out. You have to be able to help people in a practical way. And I wanted to study agriculture. And that's where I met my wife, Liz. We joined a mission organization that does these kind of ag agricultural food security interventions. When I met her, I was certainly very attracted, but it was important for me to know what her uh, life goals were. And, and I engineered it so that we walked back from the university to the, the residential colleges alone. Usually we came back in a group. And I, I just very innocently asked her, well, you know, what, what, why are you studying agriculture? Not many girls studied ag back then. And, and she just said uh, straight, oh, I, I believe God's calling me to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I knew that's, that's my girl. Now, it took me a little while to convince her, <laughs> but it, it was very important because I, often you hear stories of couples, they go to situations which can be difficult, and the one out of devotion to the other, but not because it's their life mission. And it was very important for me that, that she also felt this calling because it was hard, the, the illnesses were severe, the, the conflicts, well, it wasn't physical, it, it's emotionally, mentally draining, and just the, the drudgery of the, the heat and, and so on. So she, she's a soldier, she's tough, and she supported me every bit of the way. She has the same degree, and while I get all the attention, we're, we're very much in this together. No language. I didn't have much French. I had introductory French, but in any case, the people that we were to work with, very few educated. So they didn't have French and they certainly didn't have English. And so you, you're thrown in the deep end. And we had a th few months of introductory Hausa, that's the local language. Um, but, but really it was um, sink or swim, <laughs> and I, ch I chose to swim even though it was quite difficult. So that, that was a struggle, and then adjusting to the climate, which was very harsh, very hot, a lot of dust and um, illness. Myself and members of my family got quite sick at times. Um, then the, the usual kind of cultural conflicts and, and uh, manager-employee issues that arise, which are, I think, amplified when you're, you're young, coming from a different culture with different expectations. So it, it was quite hard, but all along, I, I really felt, no, I'm, I'm meant to be here. Um, just persevere, keep, keep going, um, and, and it'll work out. I was invited to give a short introduction in a meet and greet session with young uh, PhD students and I, I enjoy those meetings because young, young people are so fresh and enthusiastic, the whole life is ahead of them 
this cross fertilization is so important it, it, it stimulates new thinking and maybe you adapt, adapt to just what you're doing. Young people, children and, and youth, they, uh, they see more clearly than adults. We get a little bit glazed over, we take things for granted. I think back to my own childhood and how angry I was about pollution and uh, deforestation and that. Today it's very topical, it's trendy, but back then adults really weren't, didn't seem to be listening, not, not to me anyway. So, so these actions, they might seem a little bit radical and might get up the noses of government a little bit, but it's necessary. We weren't aware of climate change in the 1980s, even though in hindsight it was a factor in the drying that we were witnessing in West Africa, but everything seemed hopeless and we tried every conceivable method you could imagine and more of reforestation. Nothing worked. And, and you know, history sometimes it turns on a very small corner, a very small coin, just that uh, observation, ah, oh, there's tree stumps here. In that moment, everything changed and it became a very, very powerful movement of, of tree restoration across Niger, but today I, I would say even globally. There's so many organisations and donors and governments that are now aware of natural regeneration and they're actively either funding it or promoting it in their countries. I, I, I could have given up. Uh, I, I could have said it's, it's hopeless, um, I'll, go, I'll go back to bed, I'll, I'll go back home. But fortunately I didn't and I, I guess I would plea to young people, as hopeless as it might seem, don't give up. You, use your strength, your energy, your intelligence, there, there has to be a way.